I don't, know what, I don't know what kind of day you're having, but listen, I brought the spice to your day. <laughs> I'm Lexus Bill, and this is Personality Profile. So 8th of March is International Women's Day. It's an ode to the social, cultural, political achievements of women the world over. It's also an opportunity to raise awareness on the gender equality issues and advocate for progress towards a more equitable world. Now, today, I bring you an amazing conversation with one woman who needs to be celebrated. I mean, if she hasn't received her flowers now, well, I came with a whole bouquet. <laughs> yes. Welcome along to Personality Profile. I'll tell you about this awesome guest of mine. So, this woman's impact transcends the boundaries of Imo State in Nigeria, where she's from. Yeah. For over 25 years, my guest has graced our screens with poise and grace and carved an enviable brand as one of the screen goddesses. And when we talk about best actresses on the continent, uh, they don't come bigger than her, to be honest. Yeah. She's a multiple award-winning Nollywood actress, producer, model, television personality, investor, and a philanthropist as well. She's received numerous accolades, becoming the first actress to have won the AMVCA Best Actress Award in both the drama and comedy categories. As a producer, she was the first ever recipient of the Africa Magic Viewers Choice New Era Award in 2014. And the award recognizes people who have blazed the trails, new trails, in multiple areas of filmmaking. She's the co-founder of the Audrey Silver Company, a leading film company. Over the years, she's built an endearing brand, an inspirational one at that. She's represented many brands, including Nokia, Glow Mobile, Keystone Bank, Zarin Cosmetics. I mean, the list is endless. Rita Uchenna Mkeb Dominic. <laughs> I probably screw, screw the, song, the, the name, but the last one I won't even attempt. <laughs> but she will help me. Rita Dominic is my guest here. Yeah. Hello, Rita. Hello. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So How are good you? to see. So, so so I'm sure you're smiling because I screwed the name up, did um, I? Um funny enough you actually tried. Oh I tried that. Well, I'm laughing because you didn't attempt to pronounce the last name. So you're gonna help so me, huh? I'm gonna help you. Okay, good. Let's so go. Watu Rocha. Watu Watcha. Watu Rocha. Watu Rocha. Yeah. That's, oh. my, that's my name, you know, but obviously I'm married now, so it's now yes. Rita Dominic. It I'm still Rita Dominic, still but Rita my Dominic. husband's name is Anosike. Okay. So it's Rita Dominic Anosike. There you go. Yeah, but I am Rita Dom. My Rita Dominic name is still there. <laughs> <laughs> the brand is still Rita Dominic. Absolutely. You know, when I'm working, it's Rita Dominic. Good stuff. Um, outside of work, I'm Mrs. Rita Dominic Anosike. Well, Mrs., you're welcome. And you're looking Thank glorious. You. Thank you. And I keep telling you, Thank you. Rita, it's only an interview. <laughs> like, it's only a conversation we're about to have. And um, it looks red carpets now. Really, this is red carpet? Then wait for the red carpet. Oh, then. my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to all ends to make her presence yeah. felt. And we're excited to have you. How are you, by the I'm way? I'm very well, thank you. And thanks for having me. And how's Ghana treating you? Are oh, you having I'm, fun so oh, far? I'm, or I'm amazing. I need to make some calls. Yeah, okay. No, Should I'm, I? I? No, you shouldn't, actually. Um, are you sure? I've been well taken care mm -hmm. of. Um, I've had a warm reception. Okay. Um, Ghanaians are just, you know, they're so... You're so polite, you know, <laughs> at each sentence or at the end of every sentence, you know, yes, please. Or if you ask them a question, <laughs> they'll respond with a yes, please at the, the end. Yes, they're very please. polite, they're very warm, yeah. they're very hospitable, you know, so it's been amazing since I've been here. Great. Yeah. And um, is there anything we can do to make it better or add up to it a little bit more? Hmm, let me it. think. You know what? Uh -huh. I'm yet to try the famous Ghanaian jollof rice. I want to understand what this war about okay. Nigerian jollof and okay. Ghanaian jollof is about. So That's good. I'd like to try that. I've not I'm tried happy that you yet. have it now yeah. because 
we need to get you the best of the best. Yes. And believe me, you're going to love it. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking My only to problem that. is you might actually want to stay a little longer and enjoy and denounce right. your Nigerian citizenship. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> After tasting the jollof <laughs> bread, yeah, we would actually make sure you have that before you leave. Yeah. yeah? Okay, sure. I'm looking okay, forward great. to that. Okay, great. This year's theme for the International Women's Day is Inspire Inclusion. Inclusion. I mean, generally on the topic, what do you think about the efforts that the world has made in advocating for a more equitable world and a better place for women to thrive? Which is why the conversation, you know, we need to keep having this conversation. Mm. We need to continuously, like, have such um, platforms like women of valor yeah. so that they see people women from all walks of lives you know achieve success so that they can see that success is attainable regardless of yeah. your religious beliefs yeah. your political beliefs you know your background um, it's important because for me I believe that when every woman is empowered or any every woman of every race or tribe or whatever when we're empowered then the world is much is a much better place yeah you know? absolutely. so yeah so I really Good like stuff. the theme this year so <laughs> I was, I was just thinking about, I was looking at you again and I was like, Kate did such a good job, huh? Kate? Yeah. She didn't do my makeup, actually. Oh, she didn't do She the did the hair. What? Well, she, she did some of the hair. She actually oversaw everything. She oversaw everything, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we know? need to give her flowers. Right? She's, she's done a good she, job. She gets flowers all the time. She knows. She knows. Well, I call her, she's thing, my right hand and my left hand. Yes, good <laughs> thing this conversation yeah. is not just on Joy FM. It's got to be on Joy Prime as well. Folks okay. can see you in all your glory. <laughs> cool, cool. The one and only Rita Dominic. So... It's easy to say you're one of the most successful actresses on the continent. It's easy to call out the top three and your name would be in there. Okay. Is Rita Dominic fulfilled? Is this the point where she's like, yeah, I'm happy with what I've done? Um, it's important to look at your journey and appreciate where you are and what, you know, just appreciate your journey, basically. Mm. Um, because if you don't look back you won't appreciate the present. So I, I'm one of those that, in as much as I appreciate my journey and where I find myself, I don't rest on my laurels in the sense that I don't believe that I know everything. I believe in constant education, constant um, acquiring, or the need to acquire knowledge. You know, for me, I believe that doesn't stop. It continues even till you, you get older, you know, you continue to learn, you continue to be better, continue be, to be a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. So in as much as I'm happy where I am, I'm, fu I'm fulfilled. However, I believe in, you know, I believe in still pushing. To be pushing honest. for what again? That you'll, <laughs> you'll find out very soon. <laughs> because I'm thinking, um, what's there for Rita Dominic to do again? Um, there, Tell me, this, what, what this, really are the this, things that you are excited about There's so about much now? more. There's so much more. Okay. First and foremost, I'm now handling, or rather, my husband has handed over Miss Nigeria Beauty Pageants to my company oh, to manage it for about five years. Yes, the Miss Nigeria, Nigeria Pageants. So Pageant. you would be handling that. Yes, and well, our first edition is this year, next month, hopefully. Oh, I <laughs> fingers, see. Fingers crossed. Oh, I'd love to be there. Yes, Miss so Nigeria. Yeah. Are you getting the crown yourself, or are you giving I'm it to all the I'm giving girls? it to someone else. <laughs> 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 you know, so it's um, okay. it's it's a bit scary in the sense that there's new waters. I've not done anything like that before. Okay. And it's also exciting because it's something new. I've mm. learned a lot in such a short period between myself and my business partner. We've done crash programs on. Uh, pageantry because okay. we have to study it because it's different yeah. from film and we're bringing elements of film to it as well you know mm. we're bringing elements of reality into it in the sense that you know you have so many biases about beauty pageants mm. so we want to create a reality aspect of the process so that people can begin to understand that this is not just about being beautiful it goes yeah. beyond that which is yeah. what Miss Nigeria is about it is an empowerment platform to empower this young woman so we want to let people know that it's not just about beauty, it's about brains, about, mm -hmm. you know, who you are on the inside. So we want to capture that process so yeah. that the viewers can see what it's about. No, we're looking for We're just we're merging that. both yeah. together. Yeah. Film, beauty pageant. Yeah. No, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. yeah, so that's something new that we're working on. And also we have a lot of projects we're doing yeah. um, this year uh, for my company or my company, the Audra Silva company. We have two projects we're filming um, this year, hopefully. The first one is a comedy, film people. The second one is, you know, the return of a very iconic film. We're going to be doing the part two of The Meeting. You know, The Meeting was a very popular yeah. film when it was released and all that. So, yeah, 
those are the things. So that's what do I'm you still enjoy going on the screen, or now you I enjoy do doing the production bit that you're into now? Um, to be honest, I'm still an actor, and I'll always be an actor. And acting is my first love. I yeah. mean, that was what I knew, and that's what I studied yeah. and majored in before deciding to go behind the camera. Mm -hmm. So I still act. I mean, I have a film that was released in December on Prime, uh, okay. Amazon Prime. Um, then I just finished the Netflix original that was uh, co-produced. Uh, no, who? No, it was it was a partnership between Netflix and Ebony Life right. Films, owned yeah. by Moa Boudou. Yeah, so it's a Netflix original. We just yeah. finished. It's a series. It's ju we just finished filming it. So, um, in as much as I like the process of filmmaking, I still like to be in front of camera. Yeah. Because I like becoming. I like the idea of becoming. Yeah. You know, being somebody else. You know, for me, I use um, acting as a way of studying human beings. Because mm -hmm. when you're playing a role, you're studying a human being without even meeting that particular person. You know, so. I just love everything about, in fact, I just love everything about filmmaking, being in front of it, behind it. Okay. Yeah. Since we're taking stock of your journey, and I'm glad you say you're fulfilled and you're happy with the journey. If you look back, what's really that moment you thought probably this is my best moment in my career? There are a number of them, a few of them. Well, I would say, uh, I'll say when 76, a film I featured in, mm -hmm. um, had its world premiere at Toronto Film Festival you know uh, for me that was huge yeah you know and um, I think every actor wants their work to be seen on the global stage yeah and that was what 76 did for me at TIFF the yeah. Toronto International Film Festival so yeah what are you proudest of um, where I am today who I am what I've done with you know um, just being here, to be honest, being here, still being um, relevant, mm -hmm. because to be honest, to still stay relevant after 24 years in the industry, it's, yeah. it's not easy, you know, let's, let's be honest. So being here, still being, you know, very relevant and all that, I just, I give God the glory, you know, I'm a Christian, so I will definitely give God the glory for that and um, I appreciate that and that's something. What's I your biggest regret? <laughs> hmm, what's my biggest regret? The ones you don't want to share, I, I respect So this that. is, I don't, how do I, I don't really like to say I, yeah, okay, fine. Obviously, well, I'm a human being. There will yeah. be certain things you do and uh, you may regret. But I don't like to dwell on my regrets because for me, it's a learning process. Mm. So I don't really like to call them regrets. We also want me. to learn. Yeah, yeah uh, it's okay. Learn from your own. <laughs> <laughs> So let me guess, yeah. it, it doesn't have to do with acting? Not necessarily, not, um, well, okay, let me put it this way. Maybe at the start of my career, you know, making like poor choices with certain ro scripts and roles that I was given. Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe. So there were certain that. scripts, roles, personalities that you didn't like becoming? I didn't like becoming and I didn't like the quality of the project and I knew, but I just went ahead and did it. Because of the money? Yeah. Mm, because of the money, sometimes it's just because of the money. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So, well, it's been 24 years. Mm -hmm. For you, did, was that the passion? Was that something you wanted to do? I, I, I read somewhere you actually started acting at age five. Yes, actually. I've been doing this all my life, to be honest. I wow. mean, my mom, my mom said I came out of her womb, literally, like, lights, camera, action in my head <laughs> you know so this is all i've known this yeah. is all i've ever done i've been doing this since i was how five. you introduced to that at, uh, at five is your, your so parents just yeah it was my mom movie? it was my mom so i think my mom was actually trying to leave her dream through me from oh. what i understand now because <laughs> i found out about four years ago that my mom wanted to become a photographer at that time but my her father my grandfather yeah my late granddad refused you know then yes um, who would let their first child be a photographer exactly especially a female yeah. You know, so, and that just puts a lot of things into perspective for me. And I realized that, okay, I think she was trying to live her dream through me because mm -hmm. for some, she realized, I think she noticed my talent from such mm -hmm. a young age and she helped to hone it. I started attending like uh, children programs where you display like talent shows yeah. every Saturday and Sunday. I did that through my childhood. So I'll come back from school, I'll finish my homework and then I'll start 
like preparing for a recital or a poem or a presentation for the Saturday for the yeah. show. So as a child in the area where we lived, I was actually known. You were known? Yes, as a child, you know, performer, actor. And then I went on to secondary school. I was made the, um, I was a social prefect mm -hmm. and also the vice president of the dramatic club and the press club. Okay. You know, and then when it was time to study, to go to university, it was a no-brainer. Everybody in my family knew that I was going to study theater arts. Yeah. Which was a blessing because at the time, many parents did not want Allow their children, their children to study the arts. Yeah, you know, so... I really, 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 really um, loved my parents for the support. And it's like you've been siblings. in the limelight your All my life. whole life. Absolutely, yeah. You enjoy it? <sighs> okay. I enjoy, I enjoy the creative part of it. Let me just put it that way. I enjoy, I enjoy creating. I enjoy becoming. And then, you know, obviously the fame comes with it. So, okay, fine. But what about the fame bit? Tell me about it. Um, it's, okay, fine. Yes, the fame is nice. It can open doors. It can do all sorts of pleasant things for you. But there are aspects of it that I really don't like. Which aspects? You know, you can't, like, you know, you can't really be yourself sometimes. You know, people are constantly, like, you're under scrutiny yeah. all the time. Yeah. You know, so that's the part that I struggle with. Even yeah. after how many years, I still struggle with it a little bit. It yeah. gets better, yes, over the years, but I still struggle with that scrutiny and that constant, um, um, what's the word, that constant judgment, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And misunderstanding as well, because a lot of people probably misunderstand, misunderstand who yes. you are. Yeah, they do. And then sometimes, they tend to think that I'm some of the characters or roles I play. I'm yeah. not. I'm different, which is why it's so important to me to be different from the roles I play. Mm. You know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear that you had parents who supported the dream to become absolutely uh, a, a creative art person. Yeah. Uh, because that was qu quite not common 20 years ago. It was not. It yeah. wasn't. But what are the And lessons? both were medical people. Say that again. My parents were both medical people. Do well, medical people. Mm -hmm. Wow. My dad was a medical doctor. My mom was a chief nursing officer. <laughs> exactly. I know. Wow. Yeah. I was lucky. You totally were. And you yeah. were the last born. Yeah. Of four children? Four children, yeah. And yeah. they're Okay, well, yeah. well la last borns get whatever they want. Uh, okay. If you say I mean, so. Yeah. But funny enough, none of my siblings told the medical line. All of them. All of them. Mm, all of them. None. None of them. None of them. Okay. What are they into? Um, one, uh, one is a software engineer. Okay. One is. Uh, uh, huh. <laughs> I can't Sorry. Um, is it time to open the family I WhatsApp group? <laughs> I, I, I can't. Can I? Can I? Can I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, both of them are sort of in. Uh, you know, like they work with mental health patients. Okay. Kind okay. of. One works with mental health patient. The other one works with. It's somewhat she does a similar. So well, it's still kind of um, it's yeah. okay, medical, but yeah. not like medical Mainstream doctor. Mainstream medical doctor. Mainstream medical yes. doctor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson your parents taught you? Believe in yourself. Um, nothing. Well, when they say something is impossible, try and make it possible. Try all mm. your best to make sure it's possible until it's impossible. Share with me, I mean, if I mention your mom, share with me one of your fondest memories of uh, mm -hmm. as a young person. Yeah, so my mom always used to, okay, so she was uh, actually very funny, and I don't think she knew how funny she was. So she would say the funniest things, and then we'll start laughing. And then she always used this word, you guys are making a caricature of me. And she said it with this very thick, you know, Nigerian accent, and it was <laughs> always so funny. So each time I would mimic her, it would even annoy her more because I'm making her. And it was always so funny. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember that all the time. And then I used to follow her around a lot in the house. I don't yeah. know, maybe because I'm the, I was the last child or yeah. I'm the last child. I will, she'll go from the living room to the kitchen. I'm walking behind her. She'll go from the kitchen to I'll be walking behind her. So, you know, and each time she told me, stop following me. And she'll say with <laughs> such a smile, but she, it's like she wanted me to continue following her, not yes. to stop, you know. So, what yeah. about your dad? Oh, my dad. <laughs> so, my dad, yeah. There's this food back home. You know the fufu? Fufu, yes. yes. My dad hated fufu. He would eat the pounded yam and the eba. 
mm. but fufu he couldn't stand the smell so when my mom liked eating it so each time my mom was making it my dad was my dad would say to me what's that thing stinking in the kitchen <laughs> my mom is making that shit food again why is she making that? and my dad was so english you know right. yeah so it was just little things like that i mean my dad was always nice what a most of them just had that. very um you know, they, they, they really had huge sense. Their humor was, they had, they were very funny people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm they sure it helped your, your drama life. It, they brought the drama on, eh? It, it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Rubbed off you in so many I, ways. I, it's possible. Yeah. I think so. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. So what? Many years later, you're now an actress on mainstream Nigerian television. The whole of Nigeria knows you. I mean, Ghana knows you too. Africa is getting to know you. Where? Did the big break coming? Hmm. Was it a process or, or it was a moment? I think it was a process for me. Okay. Some other people, it was a moment or yeah. they had their moments. I had mine was a process. I was lucky that my first project in Nollywood, I played a lead role. Your you know, first project? My first project in Nollywood. However, mm -hmm. that you think that because you played a you know, lead role with your first project, it was going to continue being that way? No. I had my lows after that. You know, <laughs> in that process, I had certain films that were, you know, that did very well mm. in the market because that was the era of uh, VCD. Right. Yeah, before cinemas came. Mm -hmm. Now, when cinemas came, I executive produced, co-produced, mm -hmm. um, and acted in this film I'm telling you about the meeting. Oh, the one we're about to do, the, part yeah, two. The, yes, the funny one. It yes. was hilarious. People had never seen me in such a role before. Yeah. So that was another, you know, uh, very um, successful outing mm. for me. When you know, when when cinema culture was introduced to the Nigerian Nigerian entertainment or film industry. Yeah. Yeah. So that did well. Seventy six did well. Mm. Um, yeah, I had a few of them that did well. So for it's a lot been a of process, people, really. For a lot of people, when mm. they start, you know, making film mm -hmm. as actors and yeah. actresses, it's more of a sacrificial job. Because you mm -hmm. want to, uh, you, you get paid pittance because of you course. want to make a name for yourself. Absolutely. Was and it was the same for you? Of course. I mean, there was no money. I remember when I used to say, when I was still in uni studying theatre, I always talked about, you know, wanting to work in the film industry. It wasn't called Nollywood at the time. And I remember my friends used to look at me like, are you all right? <laughs> There's no money. How you could survive? Yeah. And, f you know, to me, they didn't, they didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't understand what they were saying. I just wanted to work as an actor. I wanted to create. I wanted to just, you know, become. Let me just yeah. put it that way. And to be honest, there was no money in Nollywood. We were mm -hmm. just doing it for, you know, the passion. We had the passion for the arts, which is what drove us. You know, that was, which is what fueled us, you mm -hmm. know. And um, it, w it was very challenging. It was not easy. But we just kept doing it until the industry, you know, got bigger and bigger and bigger. And obviously the pay became much better. Do you recall the lowest amount you, uh, you got paid for a film? I didn't, also get, I didn't get paid for, okay, the first film I did, he paid me 35,000 Naira. But he owed me 20K for almost, in fact, he didn't even pay me the 20K. He, no, he didn't pay me the 25K. Wait, let me pull out my calculator Yeah, he didn't, pull out, he didn't pay me the 25,000. He actually now hosted the premiere of the meeting and said he was using that as payment. <laughs> <laughs> that was Basaj Tariya. May God bless his blessing. So 35,000 yeah. Naira, that's yes. uh, 280 yeah. Ghana cities. Exactly. He paid me only 10K. 10K oh, out of the... Out of the 35,000. Wait, hold up. So the remaining 25,000, he didn't pay me. Okay. And then the second project I did, he never paid me. Oh, and, wow. you know, may God rest his soul, the marketer died. Okay. <laughs> 10,000 Naira, that's yes. what you got? Yes. That's 80 CDs? Yes. Okay, so that can actually get us, uh, <laughs> it can get us a plate of jollof. Oh, there you go. And that <laughs> but was without chicken. Yes, the, without <laughs> chicken. I mean, look at that. That was in, uh, what was my first one? That was 1998. 98 or about, yes, yeah. Yes, that was 1998, yeah. So, and then some <laughs> films I did, you know, I was paid peanuts, you know. Wow. But for some reason, I just kept doing it because yeah. it wasn't just me, especially like myself and my peers. Motola, Genevieve, we were just doing it because we loved it. Mm. You know, Ramsey, all of us were just acting because we just enjoyed it. And obviously, as the industry got better and bigger, so did the finances become better. You know? At the time, w weren't your family worried? Like, oh, they were. You know, you 
you're getting the fame, you're oh, on yes. TV. Yeah, you're so where's the money? Where's the money at? Where's the money, where's the money? You know what I mean? But I guess I was lucky because uh, I'm the last child, mm -hmm. so I didn't really have, you know, that much, say, pressure, okay. you know, to take care of parents and yeah. things like that. My siblings were already doing that. So the pressure was off me a little bit, yeah. you know, but they were just worried, you know, wondering what is our younger sister doing? Are you, what, what's happening, you yeah. know? And um, to be honest, I ignored them quite a number of times. I just continued doing what I was doing. And thank God they were no, we didn't have mobile phones because yeah. maybe if I had mobile phones, I'm sure my phones would have been <laughs> constantly <laughs> ringing. Rita, what are you doing? Get out of that place, you know? So yeah, um, I just kept doing what I was okay, doing. Okay, so if there's one thing you need to know about popular people, um, they've got very, well, should I say selective amnesia. See how excited she was when we talked about the lowest as she ever took? Okay. Hello, Rita. So Hello. tell me, what's the highest you've ever taken? It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Not revealing it. Definitely not. You, you see what I told you? <laughs> yeah, they, they won't. In fact, yes, you're right. Selective amnesia. I can't mm, remember. You can't remember. There you go. Mm, yeah. Shame on you. Shame, yeah. <laughs> Too bad. But it's been better now, yeah. right? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. It's much better now, and obviously it's even much better if you're a producer. Okay. Because you make mo more money even from you know the back end deals yes. and things like that. Yeah. And now you distribute the money actually, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and when 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 uh, my company is producing, mm -hmm. I still act for people. Yeah. You know, but okay, when, right. I, when my company is producing, obviously we executive produce and yeah. we take care of you know, the, the financial aspect of yes. it. Mm -hmm. I think the industry has gotten a lot better as well because even though the VCDs and whatnot are not there, the streaming that's bringing some yes, good revenue, platforms. Yes. the online platforms mm -hmm. are helping, right? Yes, oh, of course. I mean, um, with all the Netflixes and yeah. uh, Prime, Amazon Prime and um, Showmax, Showmax, it's, it's helped filmmakers a lot as yeah. well. Just Would you say times are better now than then? F to be an actor, Mm. Or an actress? Kind of, in a sense that you see the money. Okay. You know, and it's transparent. Mm. You see how many people are watching it on the streaming platforms. You know, you see how many views, you know, and then your work is seen, um, it, it reaches a wider audience. Okay. So a I will global say. Global audience. Global audience and a wider audience. Mm -hmm. You know, so yes, I will say. Kind of, it's yeah. better. Mm -hmm. So the journey. But you still have, you still have the very commercial films. Yeah. You know, the ones who are uh, doing the films in the eastern part of Nigeria, in Enugu Asaba, and they they seem to be doing very well as well because mm. they're releasing their films on YouTube, mm. and you know YouTube they have their audience there. Yeah. So those ones, you know, for me, I believe it's just like in Hollywood, you have the uh, straight to TV films and you have the blockbuster films. Yeah. So you'd always have the ones that cater to a particular audience. So there's a balance. You have the films that cater to, you know, the YouTube, the YouTube yeah. audience, and then you have the ones that cater to the streamers and the cinema people. Yeah. So it's 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 okay all round. This journey to being Rita Dominic, it's not been all smooth. It's not. What's will you sh say is the biggest challenge you've encountered in your career? I'm just going to share one. Um, okay, before I decided to become a producer and form or co-form the Audrey Silva company. I was silently banned in the industry by the marketers. You, know, you the were market silently banned? Yes. You know, the marketers were the ones who had the power to call the shots. They were the lords, the mini gods of the industry at the time. And I'm talking about, you know, the VCD era. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, they banned me silently because I wanted to do things differently. I was trying to, when I say differently, I was, um, I would not say rebrand. I mm. just felt like it had gotten to a point where, you know, if you want to acquire services of an actor, you know, you, it's best to talk to their management, right? Which is the right, which is the norm, you know? So I tried to change certain things about my brand and all that because it was becoming very overwhelming for me to still be doing my negotiation and things like that it became so overwhelming so I started working with manager I got this manager who I started working with who I'd, who I'd always refer them to talk to which didn't go down well with they didn't, it didn't go down well with them they didn't like the fact that you had a manager manager now or someone yes. who was representing representing you. me they were not used to that they didn't you know 
they just were speaking to us directly, you know, and all that, which is fine. But the thing for me, I just became, it was becoming overwhelming for me to be doing that, which is mm -hmm. why I had a manager and I'd refer them to my manager and I don't think they liked that. So they didn't really, it wasn't a, a vocal ban or mm -hmm. anything like mm -hmm. that. It was uh, because years before, prior to that, they had banned some of my colleagues and they had, uh, there was this out bust and outcry all over, so all over the world, internet at the time, uh, giving them, criticizing them for doing that and all that. So when mm -hmm. it was my turn, they didn't really say anything about it. It was very silent because yeah. how did I know? The work stopped coming. Right. The work stopped coming. They were not you calling know, you and to they were not push calling you on And that. this is after, after I had even achieved fame. You know, this mm -hmm. just shows you that they were still calling the shots. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know, and then after a while I said to myself, you know what? Because my manager at the time had said to me, she was thinking of forming a, f a production company. Would I want to form it with her? I was still dilly dying. I wasn't sure. Now, that made me make up my mind. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to form this um, production company with mm -hmm. you. I'm going to shoot my own films. Mm. If they won't give me work, I will give myself work. And even if I'm, d I don't have to act in all my films. I can still yeah. even give people work as yeah. well. And that's what I did. That's how the Audrey Silver Company was formed. And now, when you look back, you you still think they blacklisted you mm. because of the whole I new really setup. I may or be wrong, but I think there was something else. No, that's the only thing. I, I I can bet my life that that's what happened. They you never didn't came out offend to anybody in the no, industry? Uh, no, I think that was what happened. Because we're used to, you know what you see, manager, you, you have management now. Yeah. And t we didn't have all that then, so it was new for them. For me to like, be telling oh, them to okay. speak to manager, it was, yeah, they didn't understand so it. So you think and they, they have were arrived? There. Yeah, that kind of, that was <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay, we'll show you. But silently. Wow. Silently. Hmm. Yeah. What role did being a woman play in your success or otherwise in the industry? And as a woman, what are some of the challenges you encountered? Um, being told that you're only pretty or good enough to be in front of screen. Yeah, because when we first started, we were all just in front of camera, mm -hmm. acting, right? Then you hardly had any woman behind camera because they felt like we didn't have the knowledge mm -hmm. or the wherewithal mm -hmm. to, you know, shoot a film or be behind camera mm -hmm. you know we were told what to do how to think you know how to speak they'll write your your roles for you we didn't have many female script writers so obviously the males were writing from their own perspective and mm. you know what it means from their own perspective mm -hmm. you know so those were some of the challenges that i dealt with and then fast forward years later this set i just told you i just finished the netflix production um all the heads of department were women for the first time i saw a woman um, was a steady cam operator. Mm -hmm. I saw a woman sound recorder. All of them were women, and I was so impressed. And I told them, I said, we've come a long way. When I first started this industry, they felt we were just pretty enough, and thank God we had talent to yeah. just put us in front of camera, behind the camera. The only people, the only women you would have behind camera were the heads of wardrobe department mm. and makeup, because at the time men were not doing makeup or even styling um, the char characters we were playing. Yeah. Yeah. All the rest were done by men. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's it's changed a lot. Even in my company, yeah. Yeah. you know, we have a lot of women doing things. I mean, two women we own the production company. Oh, we okay. have, yeah, we have like assistant producers and things like that. Mm. Women, they don't work for us permanently, but when we want to um, acquire their services, yeah, you know, we tend to go for Over the women past who have because I mean, mm. you have to have the experience mm. and know what it is you're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily about your um, gender. Yeah. yeah. Over the past couple of weeks on our Showbiz A to Z program here on Joy FM, um, Kwame Dadzi and his crew have been dealing with the issue of sexual harassment in the, in the creative art, art industry. Um, have you encountered anything of the sort? Um, Personally, I didn't when I started. I did not. Was, but was it happening? Um, I had stories. Mm. You know, some a few people complained to me yeah. that they were experiencing some of these things. And um, I've had a few stories about sexual harassment and mm -hmm. things like that in the industry. And um, I, I, I've criticized it in my own way on my social media handles mm. in the best way I can. You know, we have to constantly keep talking about 
it and then also um, our AG and I think they've made some they ha have some rules now about things like that which is very good yeah um, yeah so so once if you are abused or things like that there are numbers to call yeah there are things to be done to the call in fact there's a well something happened recently actually a makeup guy was molesting or har sexually harassing a young actress a sh uh, like a child actress Ooh. in a film yeah this happened in the east actually so i think the boys in jail now they're good in court right yeah. now agn is very agn is actors guild of nigeria yeah so they're very much on the case mm. yeah what are some of the things that you think need to be done to ensure sanity in the creative industry in the film industry or things that you wish to see will happen in the film industry on the continent um it would be nice for actors to have their um what's the word uh it's not like you know when you've worked anytime your film is paid you get uh what's that thing called what's it called when uh, you enter work no when you're f when you when you're in a film and it's played oh the royalties the royalties thank you yes oh, my head <laughs> yeah it would be nice for actors to have their royalties mm. you know so that way people are not struggling even when they when they get older yeah. which has been the challenge in the industry for some old actors you know they've been struggling financially That's and that true. shouldn't be so these are people who have done major films they've been mm. involved in major films mm. and all that and then all of a sudden when they're old you know they're, they're, they're struggling financially meanwhile their films are still being played on YouTube on all these play you know all these yeah. platforms and they're not even getting royalties or getting money from that that is one thing I would really like to see change mm. yeah Good stuff. I think that's because you have to empower. I mean, our well. actors yeah. should be in finan financially empowered. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They, sh they should be, to be honest. Yeah. Well, the assumption is you make a lot of bucks during your lifetime, so maybe it's Investing more financial as well. planning. And then you can thank you. That's that, that too. Work. That right? too. That too. So maybe um, some of us need to, you know, invest more. Hmm. do more financial planning yeah you know and um, understand that the work will not always keep coming and you know it's no. it, it it doesn't help as well when actors and actresses also look like they've got life figured out you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. during the prime everybody's looking all you know mm -hmm. driving the best cars yeah the mansions but that's the thing but that's the thing because as the money's coming you're spending it to look a certain way to yeah you know to maintain that whole persona yes. of uh, I'm an actor I'm a star you know it's 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 expensive as well mm. having to uh, support the brand or yeah. support the, the 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 celebrity status yeah. it's expensive so which is why you have to know how to spend your money do you feel pressured to keep up I with do the not, status? I'm not one of those mm. I definitely don't feel pressured mm. some do don't get me wrong do which is why maybe they feel the need to do other things to you know I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel that pressure. To I keep up the appearance. To keep up the appearance. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. I, I really don't. Yeah. Uh, you see, life is easy. Human beings complicate things. Mm. You know, in the sense that just, you know, know your, just know your limits and just cut down on your expenses. Mm. It's important for us to do that. You know, is the, the moment you, s you start to think that, oh, I need to present this whole... Uh, persona or whatever to the world you have to see me be this kind of person that is when you start to struggle mm. and then why would you put yourself through that for what because you, you want to please the public and displease yourself because when your pockets run dry they won't be there for you mm -hmm. you know you have just yourself during a period you had that silent ban how mm -hmm. bad did things get um, it was bad, but not, it was bad, you know, it was bad, mm. but I found a way to, to survive. How long do you think you went without getting a role? Um, hmm. so it's, this is, uh, when did I show, the meeting was, uh, uh, okay, no, hold on, maybe about two, three years. However, I went to film in Kenya. I did a film in Kenya, that mm. period, which was a very big film. But unfortunately, um, it didn't really, it wasn't um, released publicly because the couple that bankrolled the film, you know, they went through a nasty divorce oh. and the film got caught in all of that. Yeah. It was really bad. 
<laughs> Were you paid the? Of course, I was paid. I was good. paid very well. I was paid very well. <laughs> like, yeah, you guys can yeah. go divorce, and but then please, was, my money. That was what won me my first AMA award. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And I was the first actress from West Africa to win the Kalasha Awards for that same film. The wow. Eastern Africa Awards for that okay. film. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, the creative industry here in Ghana, um, a lot of the you know, players and stakeholders complain about how government doesn't exactly pay too much attention to it. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it leaves a lot to be desired, the kind of attention that it needs and the kind of investment that it needs and whatnot. Is it the same in Nigeria? What place that the creative sector, mm -hmm. you know, uh, hold well, in, the, in the economy? Yeah, to be honest, with the last government, they had all this, um, the last, no, no, not the last government, the one before him, um, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, President Goodluck Jonathan, created all sorts of um, fund schemes, you know, to support the entertainment industry, which helped. Mm. And uh, but for me, the way I I see it is, we really don't need the government creating all these uh, fund schemes and all that. I just need them to create an enabling environment for the industry and other industries to thrive. Mm. Once they understand that this industry can generate a lot of revenue for the economy, then maybe they will see the need or feel the need to create an enabling environment for us to thrive. Right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Ghana and Nigeria have been, well, should I say protégés or family when it comes to the creative sector. In fact, a few years ago, there was a lot of collaboration between Ghanaian mm -hmm. uh, actors and Nigerian actors, mm -hmm. there were all these. Did you, did you do any of those? Oh yes, I did a film or two here in Ghana. Yeah. I think two. You yeah, know, there was a moment, there were all these two, very yeah. interesting collaborations, yes, Ghana, Nigeria yes. collaborations and oh, yes. whatnot. Yeah. Tell me about those experiences. It was nice, I mean, having that collaboration and having yeah. all the crossovers and things like that. In fact, it's so funny, and I was asking Nana two days ago, what happened? Yeah. And she doesn't seem, I, don't, I know there was, it, that just stopped. I know there yeah. was this um, there was this friction between the marketers back home in Nigeria and the marketers here. I don't really know what the story is, mm. but I think that's derailed. I don't know. I really don't want to talk about. What it. I don't could know have why. been the issue? I don't know. I'm not a marketer, darling. No, but you're in the industry. I mean, so you I'm probably in the industry, would, but I don't know. Uh, you know, because even at that time, some of us had actually sort of stopped doing the very commercial films. Mm. Do you understand? In the sense, mm -hmm. excuse me, in the sense that we had stopped doing a, a lot of the commercial films I was just telling you about, the mm -hmm. VCD f movies. Mo some of us had now started doing like films that would go to cinema. Yeah. So because of that, we didn't really know what was going on a lot with the marketers in that industry. Well, okay. in not, no, in that part of the industry. So I don't really know, to be honest. I don't know, all I, ha I just heard rumors that the marketers back home, and I think all the marketers here had some sort of friction and that affected a lot of things. And if you ask me what the friction was, I have no idea. I don't know what happened. Well, you didn't care. <laughs> no, like you I didn't, no, like I didn't care. Make your movie, make your money. No, like I didn't care. Well, they, 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 they were the ones that banned me silently anyway. So. <laughs> mm, yeah. But do you remember the people you acted with, the Ghanaian actors? Oh, yes. Ivan Nelson. Ivan Nelson, uh, right. Van Vika. Yeah. Um, I think there was one more person. I can't remember. Mm. But I remember um, Ivan Nelson, Van Vika. And then back in Nigeria, I worked with Van Vika as well, okay. like once or twice. Yeah. I never worked with Majid. Majid. I worked Michelle. with Nadia. Nadia Boy. In Nigeria, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, those are the ones I know. Which uh, Ivan Okoro, I never worked with Ivan Okoro, but we know each other kind of. Yeah. I mean, uh, Lydia Forsen, I never worked with her, but I know her. Yes. She's a lovely, lovely girl. She was at my traditional wedding. She oh, came was all she? the way. Yes. Wow. And she even wore the Ashwabi. Ashwabi is the uniform that. Yes. The girl's friends wear, which yeah. was very nice and kind of her. Oh, so yeah, I'm hoping to see her while I'm here. Oh, Lydia's yeah. adorable. She's lovely. Yeah, she's, she's lovely. got a very talented a hair brand. Um, a skin yes, something. Yeah, she's doing yes, brand yes, actually. Um, yeah. doing very well. Yeah, well, that's I think amazing. I need to tell her to get you some as well. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm seeing her. I might see her this Kinky evening. Kinky Matters, yes. Okay, Kinky Matters. That's what it's, it's I think called. I saw when she was talking about it on social media. Yes. When yeah. it was released, I think. Oh, yes. She's yeah. got a very beautiful yeah. skincare hair yeah. brand or something yeah. called Kinky Matters. So she's, matters. she's lovely. Yeah. Um, Jocelyn Duma, actually. Oh, Jocelyn. Oh, Jocelyn is lovely. Yes. She couldn't make it, but she sent me these lovely gifts. You know, okay. You know, 
and um, she's not in town at the moment because right. we had a chat. Yeah. Um, I worked with her on a project last year as a series mm. that may be released on Prime or uh, Netflix. Okay. Yeah. So. Good stuff. So it means that. And even before then, I did a film with Jocelyn as well. For it's a series as well for um, MM Isong, one of you okay. know, an acclaimed producer back home. Yeah. yeah. So there's still that collaboration. There's still that Ghana Niger collaboration, uh, but not like it was before. Not like it was before, but and they're mostly cinema films or, yeah. or streamers films or s films or series that are going on streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah. It's still there, but not as much as it was at the time. I'm curious about what your thoughts are about the Ghana movie industry. Of course, it's from your experience back then mm. and now. Ah, <sighs> I know Shelley Frimpong is a very talented film you know, maker, yeah. writer, and I've seen a few of her films and she's quite good. And then I've seen one or two projects from Ghana. And, and to be honest with you, I think you guys are very talented as well. You know, yeah. Well, is there something else you want me to say? Is there something else you want to say? <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> are you sure? Very sure. <laughs> Why don't I trust you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> 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 you're looking at me and I'm wondering, okay, am I supposed to say something else? <laughs> no, no, to be honest, you're very, they're very talented, you know. Yeah. Um, I know a few of their films went, I think, premiered at TIFF as well. Mm. Either one or two premiered at uh, Toronto International Film Festival, I okay. think, Shelley Frimpong's film. Yeah. And I think there's one she did that Motola featured in with, um, oh, what's this guy's name? He's American, but he's from, uh, he's like, He's from Africa, but moved to America a long time ago. Mm. What is his name? Uh, well, he's in the film. It's about Chris? sexual... No, no, Chris. Omotola was in this film. It's a Shelley Frimpong film. It's a Shelley film. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure which and one And then um, there was Omotola. There was the, what's the, the, the dark actress that lives in London. Uh, Amake Abbasi. Amake, yes. And then there's yeah. somebody else. I think Amake Abbasi played the lead. That was a very good film. And I liked the subject matter. Right. Yeah, it was about, you know, rape and all that. Yeah. Yeah. It was quite good. good and stuff. I think he went to some major film festivals, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, good stuff. If you're just joining mm. us, we're having a good conversation here on Personality Profile with Rita Dominic. Oh, the yeah. Rita Dominic. And I've totally enjoyed getting to know uh, more about your journey. What would you like to be remembered for? If my work is my legacy. So it's important that I do films that will continue to inspire generations to come. It's very important to me. Mm. Because we learn a lot through the arts, through yeah. creativity, through film. So the kind of films I do, the kind of work I am involved in, mm -hmm. you know, I want it to continue to inspire people. Well, even what when I'm not here. What's the biggest lesson life has taught you? Hmm. When you think of something, do it immediately. Because when you keep, um, you know, like postponing, procrastinating, you might just get lost and you never do it and you now start to have regrets. So oh, I should have done this in the minute I spoke about it years ago and all that. Once you think of something, once you think of doing something, if it's doable, if it's attainable, mm. do it that time. I'm curious, how did you learn that lesson? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> it's something that's very personal. Yeah. No, I can't. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> yeah. Just take that one now. Let me keep some to myself. No. Okay. I, I could tell that there's a story behind there's this a lesson. Story, there's a story behind it, but I'm not going to say it. You're not going to tell me that one? No, I will not. But the next one you're going to tell me. What's the next one? Okay. How's married so far? It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, inter it's interesting. I'm mm. blushing. Oh my God. <laughs> it's nice. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's been how many years? Two years now? Two right? years, yeah. Yeah. Two years in April in for April. the traditional marriage. I see. Mm. Mm -hmm. How did you meet? How did you, you know, <laughs> hit it up? <laughs> You don't have to turn oh purple now. Oh my God, now. I am turning pink. <laughs> um, well, we were friends for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And then we found love and dated and then got married. And mm -hmm. um, this, is this your first marriage? Yeah. 
and it came two years ago. Yeah. Why did you wait so long? Why did I wait so long? I wanted to do it. I wanted to be sure that I was marrying for the right reasons and not for the reasons, you know, that stems from societal pressure. Okay. Yeah. Was society given pressure about the timing of, course, of it? Of course. There were pre I mean, even before I got married, the pressure was there for years. But, you know, um, I just turned a, a deaf ear. Yeah. Yeah. Because this was way after 45, right? Yes, of course. And I'm yeah. sure people will be like, okay, Rita, well, what's going on? Yeah, they were doing that, but I couldn't be, because at the end of the day, like I always said, I will marry the man of my dreams and not the man the society dreams for me. Because if anything goes wrong tomorrow, I'll be the one left to pack up the pieces yeah. and not the society. Mm. So I'll do it when I want to do it at the right time. And I believe I did it at the right time with the right person. Okay. Why do you think it, it took that long? Was it because there were not too many good people or right people around you? I met quite a number of people, but maybe we just it just didn't yeah. happen. It just didn't work out. Okay, two and years. I do, and, I don't, and I don't believe in forcing things. You know, yeah. if it's not working, if you guys are not compatible, there's no point in mm. forcing things and then you go into it and then tomorrow you're out of it. Yeah. For what reason? Did the fact that you were such a huge public figure also make it more difficult to get married? I don't think so. I think that's even when you have a lot of people wanting to marry you. So then you have, you have a, a, a problem of choice? Oh, it's possible. But that was the case, huh? Maybe. Yeah, it looks like it, right? I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're smart. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad you finally made the choice. And then, yeah. um, I mean, I saw pictures of the yeah. wedding and it was grand and all mm -hmm. of that. So if you had to give anybody marriage advice after two years, what would you tell them? Marry a friend. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Marry a friend and um, make sure you guys, your goals and dreams are aligned. Mm. Yeah. Good stuff. Anyway, there's so many young people who want to be like the Rita Dominic, who you inspire, who look up to you. Talk to them. Hmm. Okay, so this is very, um, when you say talk to them, it's a bit vague in the sense that, now some people, is it that, okay, I have young people, you know, approaching me regularly, and they say things like, oh, I want to become an actor, mm. or I want to be like you. And I always ask, what do you mean you want to be like me? I just want to be like you, a celebrity. Mm. That's a mistake, first of all. You have to understand, what, what do you want to do in a creative industry? Mm. Are you creative? Do you want to act? Do you want to sing? Do you want to write? Do you want to direct? What, what you have to understand what it is you want to do. Mm. And, um, you know, pay attention to that because if you just go into the industry with the sense or um, the idea of just becoming a celebrity, mm -hmm. you're doing a disservice to yourself because all you're going to be doing is just concentrating on being this popular person with no substance. There's got to be substance. There's got to be something. You have to be celebrated for something. So it's either you're an actor and you know what you're doing as an actor and then ultimately the, the acclaim and the celebration will come off of that or will come from that yeah do you understand absolutely so yeah that's basically what i always say to no, them that's that's good advice yeah. and i'm so glad you shared i've totally enjoyed the company thank you for having me and, uh, you're very yeah. nosy I but i think you met your match uh. <laughs> Rita, that's actually one yeah. of the things we have in common. Yeah. We're both nosy. We're both nosy. It's just that I'm not sitting on this side of the. Yeah. Of the are you seat. serious? <laughs> you think I'm nosy? Oh, well, I know well, you I, are. Well, I, I think I actually know. I am actually. There actually, you go. Yeah, I am. I am. I am. I so yeah, be. that makes two of us. Actually. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm Lexus Bill. Rita Dominic. It's been great spending time with you on Personality Profile. Thank you so much for staying tuned in and. Next week, we're certainly back with another great, great conversation. Enjoy your day.